Today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, explore inside the Waco Elvis house that you can rent on Airbnb. Elvis was here back in the 50s. All right, guys, you see this carport right here? Well, there's an Elvis story to this that I'll let Janice tell you later. But, so let's explore inside the house. Welcome. Let's see if anyone's home. Hi, Trey. Hey, Janice. Welcome to the Elvis house. Well, can I come in? Of course, come on in. I'm excited. I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> I'm excited too. I'm glad you're here. All right, guys. Have you ever seen this picture? This little girl with Elvis. Elvis has his eyes closed in the photo. Well, guess what? That little girl is right here in front of us. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Janice Fidel, Eddie Fidel's daughter. And this is the home where Elvis used to come visit when he was stationed a few miles down the road at Fort Hood. And Janice? Fans can now stay here. Absolutely, it's an Airbnb. It's called the Elvis House and it is in Waco, Texas. So if you're coming to visit Magnolia or you're just an Elvis fan that you wanna come see the house that Elvis used to come to, come on down. We'd love to have you. Well, Glow Trotting with Trey is staying here tonight, so I can't wait to experience the Elvis Waco house that Janice grew up in. That's right. All right, so I guess right now I'm in a kitchen. Yeah. And what I'd like to do with you, Trey, is to take you through each room and tell you what happened in this room as it relates to Elvis and his stays here. So we are going to get the ultimate tour. You are. By Janice, who was actually in a photo in this house with Elvis Presley. That's right. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's get started. This, yes, this is part of the kitchen. Uh, back when Elvis used to visit, this was more of a sitting room. We had our television over here in the corner where now we've got a, an old stereo, but the television was in that corner and it faced that way, actually, just the way that that is. And there was a chair over here and a sofa over here. Elvis loved to come in our back door. He would considered himself family. So he would come through the back door where Trey just entered and stroll through the house. The first thing he would do would be to walk through the house in its entirety, look into each room, and make sure that nobody else was in the house except for our family. So he was scouting the, scouting the place before he could relax. And a lot of things happened in this room. Um, one, I'll tell you, when I was a little girl, and this all happened when I was four and a half, five years old, I had a little table right here. And I would sit at the table in a little tiny chair, and I would draw. And out this window, I could see cars that would drive up and down the street. And one day, I was sitting here, and I saw a black limo slowly pulling up on 29th Street there. And I knew instantly it was Elvis, because he had visited before and always arrived that way. And so I jumped up from my chair and went running to find my parents and tell them that Elvis was here because that started just a flurry of uh, events that would happen. <laughs> my mom would have to start cooking if she hadn't already started cooking. Uh, my dad would get, you know, change out of his grubby clothes and put on something nice. And so that was a big event. And it happened often, uh, often enough that I knew that was Elvis when he arrived. And it wasn't just one limo. It would be several that would park down the street and kind of alert the neighbors that somebody was at our house who was very special. So that was one of the things that at this very window, I would see Elvis coming. I think Trey might have shown you the carport outside and Elvis loved that carport. He wanted to go back to Graceland and he did go back to Graceland and build one just like that. So when he saw your carport, your dad's carport, mom and dad's, it gave him the idea of that carport that we know at Graceland. That's right. That's right. That's great. Yeah, that's a cool story. So that happened outside. Um, another thing 
that happened in this room, we were all, when, when my mom and dad would entertain guests, guests would be all over the house. Some would be in the living room, some would be in the kitchen. Elvis liked to hang out in the kitchen a lot, so he was back here a lot. The kitchen is all original as far as the cabinets go, so that was the way it looked when Elvis visited here. Um, one day we were in the back of the house and someone looked out the window and, and went to get my dad and said, there's a bunch of kids outside and they're all carrying baseball bats. And it doesn't look good. They're all boys. Uh, we're a little scared about this. So my dad was going to go call the police or something. He looked out the window, this window. He could see all these kids in the yard by the carport and in the street. And he went to Elvis and said, Elvis, what do you want me to do with these kids? What do you think we should do? And Elvis said, well, Eddie, why don't you go talk to them and let's just see what they want. You know, couldn't be too bad, but some of the guys felt threatened. Uh, for some reason, I guess it was the baseball bats that did it. So Daddy went outside and talked to the boys, and it turned out that they were Elvis fans, and they just wanted to meet Elvis. And they knew he was here because there were limos up and down the road. So they wanted to meet Elvis, maybe get an autograph to give to their friends or show their friends. And so Elvis graciously walked outside and stood and talked to the boys for a long time and signed their autographs. The reason they had baseball bats is they were just down the street on a baseball field practicing and having a fun time and they were walking home and they saw the limos so they wanted to meet Elvis. So. That happened right here uh, in the backyard. Right here, 2807 Lasker, Waco, Texas. That's great, Janice. Yeah, that was a good one. And I noticed you have all these pictures on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we have, and I tell the stories um, that happened in each room, and I have them in little frames in every room, so you can kind of, if you visit, you can relive the stories here. And, um, yeah, we got all these pictures of Elvis. This is the coolest one and the most personal one in this room because that's my father with Elvis, and they are in Dallas in Oak Cliff, and... They were at a little diner. Elvis was hungry, so they had been shopping at an Army-Navy surplus store around there, mm -hmm. and um, Elvis wanted to get a bite to eat, so they, they hopped into this little diner, and Elvis is having a bowl of chili and some saltine crackers, so that's what he wanted. It looks like he has some ketchup there and a glass of water. It doesn't look like my dad wanted anything. Um, so they just stopped in at this diner and word got out in Dallas that Elvis Presley was down in Oak Cliff shopping. So a newspaper reporter showed up and this was the picture that he got. Wow. So and guess what, Janice? What? Glow trotting with Trey. Yeah. May know where that building is. And there may be a future episode. I hope so. Where Elvis and your dad once was, once upon a time. Very cool. I will watch that one for sure. I watch as many as I can. They're awesome videos. I Trey does. It. You do a great job. But this one's going to be one of the best, no doubt. These fans are going to enjoy this one because of the stories that you have of the place and just knowing that right in here where I'm standing at, Elvis would walk in and out to go to, back to his back bedroom, which we'll see here we, in a little bit. We sure will. There's another funny story that... Um, happened when Elvis was visiting. As I said, he would walk through the house first to make sure no one was here. Mm -hmm. So he was sitting in a chair over here watching the TV was on. He was watching TV. And all of a sudden, this man walks through the back door that Elvis had never seen before. And he goes, where's Eddie? To Elvis. And Elvis was just taken aback. And it turned out it was my dad's brother, Louis. And Louis was the funniest man you've ever met. He was so hilarious. And, but he was also a real person. He didn't probably even know who Elvis was sitting there, so he really completely ignored him, except for asking where my father was. So Louis walks all the way through the house trying to find my dad, finally fi finds him, and uh, they have a conversation about whatever it was that Louis thought was so important to come over to talk about. And after he left, Elvis went up to my dad and he goes, who was that? And he said, that's my brother, Louie. And he goes, oh, okay, all right. Well, turns out a few weeks later, 
Elvis was here and he wanted hamburgers. And he wanted hamburgers in the backyard. Well, we didn't have a grill and we didn't have, you know, a nice patio where we could all gather. So guess who my father calls? He calls his brother Louie, who lived just right down the street, and Elvis packed everybody. Eddie, my father, said, Elvis, you remember my brother that you met that day? Um, would you mind going to his house and we can do the burgers over there? He's got a great outdoor grill. We can party on his patio. They've got a piano. And Elvis said, sure, because Elvis was so impressed that Louis wasn't a starstruck person that just made over Elvis, pretty much totally ignored him. And uh, Elvis loved that. He loved that about Louis. So yeah, we packed everything up. My mom brought the hamburger meat, all the fixings for hamburgers, and we went over to Louis. And I remember being there, and Louis's daughter was a little bit older than me. She might have been a teenager. And she got to dance with Elvis out there on the patio. And they pulled the record player, 45 record player, outside, put it outside, turned it up as loud as it would go so that they could dance. And people were dancing and just having a great time. And it was such a nice day. I'll just never forget that. That's great. But your uncle walked in this door right here. Elvis is sitting there. Just walks right by Elvis. Hey, where's... Where's um, Eddie? Eddie, and he didn't even care because he <laughs> Elvis loved that, no doubt. Because oh man, okay, I like this. He did. This. He really did. a normal guy now. <laughs> yeah, he liked to be considered a normal guy most of the time. You know, he he wanted very basic, simple food that my mom would cook for him here in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. He um, what would your mom cook? What's that? Hold your thought. But what would your mom cook? My mom would cook. Uh, he loved pinto beans. Okay. One day he dropped in with his mom and dad and um, Granny, Minnie Mae. He dropped in. They were on their way to Dallas to go see a movie. And they just happened to drop by. And Mom had a pot of pinto beans on the stove that she had just cooked. And she would put bacon in it and stuff like that. Well, Elvis loved country cooking and he loved bacon. So he's, he went over to the stove, which was right over here. And our dining table then, our little dinette set, was right here in the middle of the room because, like I said, that was a uh, seating area. So he came over here and he pulled the top off the pot and he looked in, put the lid back down. He said, I'll have some of those, please. So my mom made up a big pitcher of tea. She made some cornbread. She fed everybody. And they got back in their car and went on their way to Dallas to see the movie that they were going to go see. That's great. So um, Gladys was here. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, Gladys. Because that was near the end of her life. It was. This all started, This some of these things started in 56. Gotcha. So Gladys passed away in 58 when mm -hmm. Elvis was in the Army. This could have been, this was probably spring, I would think, of 58 something like that, when Gladys and, and Minnie Mae both came, and Vernon. So we knew the whole family, and uh, Gladys loved kids. Apparently, I sat on her lap. You know, I just, I just don't remember that because I was so little. But those stories took place in this house. In this house. And fans can stay here. That's right. That's awesome. All right, where to next? Okay. Or any more, any more stories? Because you were, you were going to tell me something else before I asked you what That's that. all I was going to tell you was that our dining room table was here at oh. that time. Okay. And our washer dryer was there, so it was very crowded. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but that's, that's, you know, that's where Elvis wanted to eat. That's where he wanted to sit. And he was a country boy that here. loved very basic uh, foods and country foods. So when he would bring his friends over... They would want things like steaks and stuff, and Elvis wouldn't have it. He really wouldn't. He would have uh, bacon. And so my mom, there's an alleyway right out that used to be right behind those little houses out of here. And on the far corner, I'll take you over there, there was a little grocery store that had a butcher, and he was the best butcher in town. So whenever Elvis would come or whenever we needed groceries, mom would just go out the door, head down the alley, go to the store, get hamburger meat, buy bacon, buy whatever Elvis wanted, you know, buy a gallon of milk for us or whatever, and then come back. So she could just 
go out the door and in a matter of minutes she could come back with bacon. So Elvis liked burnt bacon and a lot of the people with him wanted steaks. So it was great that there was a little store that close by. Oh, simpler yeah. times. Yeah, simple times. Yeah. Simple times. Okay, so this is the kitchen. And like I told you, it was, it's all original. All the cabinets are original. The pools are original. So Elvis would have been in here uh, a lot. Then we'll go on through to the dining room. Okay. Let me see if I can turn up the lights a little bit here. Yeah, I recognize something in this room. Yeah, that's, we'll get any brighter. So Janice, I want you to do something. I want you to close that door for me. Close this door? I'll close that door. Because I want to point something out. Yes. And open that other door. Open it. Open that other door. So guys, have you ever seen this picture of Elvis, his really pretty girlfriend, Anita Wood, and Janice's mom and dad? You've seen this picture, right? Well, have you ever wondered where that picture was captured? Right here. No doubt about it. Once upon a time, Elvis was standing about right here. Janice is about where her mom is, mm -hmm. well, her dad. Is probably about where you're standing at, right, Janice? This is, yeah, probably this is about where Elvis would have been. Okay, line El me up with the door. Right, I'm going to line you up. Okay, go over to your right. Right, just a little bit more. Right there. Go go back over to your right there. Yep. That's where Elvis was. That looks was. like it. You can see that little part behind mm -hmm. Elvis. No doubt. And you're probably as tall as Anita. <laughs> so Elvis just a little taller right there. Yeah, and Anita would have been right here. Yep. And she was so beautiful and glamorous. I loved it when Anita would come over. Yeah, I hope to talk to her. I hope you can. Maybe she'll watch this video. And I get, hope so. Give us a call because she's uh, very important to the Elvis Presley she story. definitely is. And she was here in your house with Elvis. She was here. So tell me about this room. Okay, so this is the dining room. When guests would come over, Mother would lay out little plates of food, little pickles and olives and sandwiches, things like that. And uh, so we would be in this room a lot uh, with Elvis. And I believe when Dad visited Graceland in the 60s that he saw a Sputnik light fixture that Elvis has hanging in Graceland and came home and got one for us. So we had to, when I went about restoring the house to make it an Airbnb and trying to make it as much like it was when Elvis visited, I knew I had to have a Sputnik. So we got the Sputnik and put it in here. It's got the same type of light bulbs that, that they used to have back in those days. Uh, so it's kind of a tribute to Elvis. Uh, and like I say, they were, always, they were always kind of stealing ideas from each other. Elvis liked the carport, my dad liked the Sputnik. We've got some lions in the front. I don't know if those were at Graceland first, and then Dad, I'm sure they were must have, he must have seen that at Graceland, and then did that here. So it was pretty interesting. And then this picture with me and my brother Dana, who now owns this house, and Elvis. You can see Elvis is in his Fort Hood uniform, and uh, he happened to blink at that time, just as the shutter clicked, and uh, so we've got him with his eyes closed. But you can see that his hair is a lighter color too because, of course, when he entered the Army, they shaved his head and his hair couldn't be black anymore. It had to be its natural color, uh, which was kind of a, probably about the color of your hair, Trey, kind of a mid-brown, uh, lighter, uh, lighter brown. And he got really tanned working out in the, uh, in the, not the fields, but what would you call it at Fort Hood? Um, yeah. Um, um, on base. On base, yeah. On base, because they had to do a lot of maneuvers and things outside. And so he um, got a tan. He just looked great back in those days. I mean, he was a handsome guy. He was always handsome. But he was especially handsome, I thought, when, when I was a little girl looking up to him. And uh, he just looked. So like you already that. loved him as the little girl at this age? Well, you know, I knew he was special because he drove up in a limo. Fans from Waco 
would know when he was in town because of the limos on the street. And they would come, like they were on the roof of part of the house wanting to get into the house to see Elvis. We had to unlist our phone number from the phone book because the phone just rang off the hook. Uh, people trying to see Elvis, wanting to meet Elvis, that kind of thing. So I knew he was really special and he was very handsome even as a four four or five year old girl, you can see my age, I could tell he was something very special. One of my cousins recently told me that she met Elvis over here one day and they were sitting on the front steps of the house and she was 11, I believe she told me, and she was looking at him and she thought, that is the most handsome man I've ever seen. <laughs> and I thought that was so cute. So even at a young age, you can recognize uh, someone who's as special as Elvis was. Well, that picture right here, that picture was captured. Right here. Right there. All right. Elvis was kneeling down. Kind of at this angle, guys. Yep. Something like this. I was standing right here. Dana, yep. my brother, was right here. Yep. More probably like at this Where's angle because the, Elvis's head is a little right above by that. the doorknob. Yep. So right here. Yep. So now you'll know when you come in. Now you know when you come and visit in this room. This room is, has some really cool pictures captured of Elvis. All right. So just come stand here, and you know you'll want to take a selfie. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Elvis performed in Waco a couple of times too, in 1956 and 1958. And we have some pictures from those uh, performances. This was at the Heart of Texas Coliseum. That's Elvis on stage in Waco. And is that, that's still here, right? Yeah. I'm going to try to get in tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you can get in. They've remodeled it all. It doesn't look like anything like it did. This is Elvis and Waco jumping off the stage after a very energetic performance, and he's just out of breath. And you can see the sheriff here is here. He's got his gun and another man, and they're helping him off because there were some stairs there. So, um, yeah, he he would put on a high-powered show and be really tired afterwards. Yeah, so. Wow. Jumping off the stage here in Waco. That's great. There's, uh, this is also, this happened in Waco too. And uh, you'll need to go down to the Hippodrome Theater and go in there. This is Elvis at the Hippodrome. It was known as the Waco Theater at that time. And this is the manager of the Waco Theater. Elvis wanted to go see a movie that his friend Nick Adams was in called No Time for Sergeants. With Andy Griffith. With Andy Griffith. And it was playing at the Waco Theater at the time. So Elvis said, Eddie, I want to go see this movie. Can you, you know, arrange that? So Daddy said, sure, I know the, I know the manager. My dad was also in the theater business here in Waco. So he called up the manager and asked if um, the manager could keep it on the down low. Uh, but he wanted to bring Elvis in. He wanted to see this movie. And could they start it? I don't know, at a certain time or whatever. There were some arrangements that had to be made. So the manager agreed. And when Elvis and my mom and dad got to the theater, the manager had his whole family there to meet mm -hmm. Elvis. <laughs> so Elvis very graciously, once again, took pictures with them. I've seen pictures of the manager's children somewhere with Elvis that also got pictures That's great. with him. But uh, he did not keep it quiet. Uh, as, like he was supposed uh, to. Like he was supposed to, and that, all, that seemed to happen quite a bit. And another thing that happened during the filming, or during uh, the screening of that movie, is Elvis was on one side, there was Anita, there was my dad probably, and then my mom. So my mom was at one end of the road that they were sitting on. And people started to try to encroach upon Elvis. And so this guy comes and he sits, you know, fairly close to my mother. And that got her, you know, hackles up. She didn't like that. She didn't appreciate that. So she put her foot on the back of the chair in front of her so that the guy could not pass. <laughs> <laughs> she was like a bodyguard almost. That's great. And so right after that, Elvis said, we got to go. So the group got up and went out the back door. And my dad had gotten up and moved the car around to pick them up. So they couldn't even watch the movie in peace. So he didn't get to see the... He didn't get to see the whole thing. The whole thing. No. Oh, man. 
that I had to leave before it was over. And you know, I'm a big Andy Griffith fan, so I, uh, I definitely know No Time for Sergeants. Yeah, that's a classic. It's that a great movie. <laughs> early, early Andy. And, and the cool thing about that is Elvis had appeared with Andy on the Steve Allen show. So Interesting. He had worked with Andy Griffith at this point, and he was friends with Nick Adams. So oh, my goodness. He knew all these people. Yeah, yeah. Well, Elvis, I think, wanted to meet Nick Adams because he looked up to James Dean. And I have a James Dean poster here in the mm -hmm. house as a tribute to that. That's great. But Elvis always wanted to act as a serious actor, as you've read in a lot of books. And he loved James Dean. Of course, James Dean was mind-blowing at the time for his acting skills. Mm -hmm. And Nick Adams had appeared with James with James Dean in uh, Rebel Without a Cause. And so had Natalie Wood. So they had become all good friends. And then Elvis, after James Dean passed away, became friends with Nick and Natalie Wood as well. So he kind of joined into that little group. He, I think he wanted to know about James Dean, wanted to know more about him. So I think that's part of what their friendship was based on. Oh yeah, he definitely, James Dean was Elvis Presley's Elvis. Yes. And you know, yes. James Dean died right there and it, it allowed Elvis to take over. That's true. That's exactly what Because happened. the world needed James Dean mm -hmm. and luckily Elvis was right there on the rise yeah. at that point. That's right. And it just, nothing ended. It just kind of, it just blew up because Elvis kind of became kept, that rebel. Kept going, yeah. Now is this in like a copy of an autograph or? That is a copy of an autograph that I have at my home, and it's made out to my parents. Um, it says, to Eddie and Mrs. Fidel. And he called my mother, not by her first name, Linnell, but he would call her Mrs. Fidel because she kind of put him in his place one time, She, uh, which is another funny story. But if you can read that, I don't know if you can read it. Um, my. My best or something to... Yeah, may God bless you always, E.P. Yeah, okay. That's cool, E.P. He signed it E.P. Yeah, yeah. That's neat right there now. Yeah, they would call him E, too. Yeah, yeah, they called him E. Yeah. But, um, what was I going to tell you about that? Oh, about my mom. And then I'll tell you about this picture. My mom was a country girl, just like I was, was a country boy. And when he first came to visit, it was after a show at the Coliseum here in Waco, Heart of Texas Coliseum. And we were living in one of the back apartments, Trey, that very back one, that row of house that you can see on the other side of the fence. We were living in that little apartment because my grandmother lived in this house. And my dad was the youngest of all the brothers, so we were here as kind of her caregivers. Um, so this would have been 1956. We were back there. My dad had gone to the Coliseum and had met Elvis and seen it. He had met Elvis before as a disc jockey in Dallas. And when Elvis came to perform in Waco, dad went to the um, stage door and said, hey, I'm a friend of Elvis's. I want to get back there and, and say hi to him. And the guy at the door goes, yeah, sure, you're a friend of Elvis's, right? Go, go away, guy. You know, everybody was trying to get back there to meet Elvis. So um, dad said, no, why don't you go ask him and tell him Eddie Fidel is here, and I promise you he will see me. So they finally did after several minutes of going back and forth and arguing. So um, Elvis came to the stage door and opened it up wide and said, Eddie, come on back here, you know. So he was back there with Elvis, and after the show, he said, you need to come to my house. Let us put on a little spread for you, you know. My wife will put some things out for you to eat, and we can hang out. So that was the very first time Elvis had come to our house, and it was when we were living in the back apartment. I was two years old, and I can vaguely remember the party because the house, it had never looked like this before. <laughs> the house was full of cigarette smoke. It was all hazy. There was music playing. It was way past my bedtime. In fact, my mother had gotten me up and put a little dress on me so that I could meet Elvis. And so there was a party. Elvis was sitting in a chair. There's This is on some of our home movies that are all over the internet that you can watch. But um, I think I'm doing a little dance. 
and Elvis is shaking his feet to the music because he's sitting in a chair. And my mom has the home movie camera. So she's taking a picture of his, uh, oh, this is how it was. She was filming his face and he was smiling at the camera and doing his kind of half smile, you know, trying to be real cool. Well, my mom didn't really like that. <laughs> So she takes the camera off of his face and she pans down to his feet. And I think it's kind of cool because you can see his feet tapping to the music, but it was an insult um, to Elvis. And so he always respected her after that. He would never call her by her first name. It was always Mrs. Fidel. So that's why this is autographed the way it was. That's great. And he was always <laughs> wary of my mom. But she also defended him, you know, by putting her foot up to keep people from encroaching at the Waco Theater the night they went to see the movie. So it was kind of a trade-off. I think they understood each other at some level. Yeah, respect. Yeah, <laughs> respect. <laughs> Absolutely. And in this picture here, you probably recognize this. This actually hangs in Graceland in mm. the foyer. Yes, it is. And this picture was taken in Colleen by a local photographer. Elvis loved this picture of himself. He thought it really captured him better than any picture he had ever seen. So that's why it hangs in Graceland today. He had many, many copies gave and, and made and gave them out. And this one is autographed to my parents, too, and I can't read it. <laughs> but it's this is not the original. It's simply a copy. To Eddie, with the deepest and... I'll have to study it. Okay. I'll have to study it. Maybe I can decipher it. You can update us later and tell exactly. us what it says. But that's cool, though. Yeah, so this, this room has a lot of local history. Uh, on the walls and a lot of stories. So, so you're, yeah. So let's check out the living room. Is there enough light in here for yeah, you? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, great. Um, this is the living room, and I tried to set it up in a similar fashion as it was when Elvis visited. We had a curved sofa that was set in this space right here. We had a round um, coffee table there. And our piano was over here on this wall. So you can see the piano was right here. Our front door is right next to it. And Elvis would love to sit and play the piano. So when he would be sitting here playing the piano, this front door would be open because we did not have air conditioning back in those days. That was something only very rich people had, and I don't even know if it was really invented <laughs> at some, you know, when that came into being. But anyway, Elvis would sit here, the front door would be open, people walking by on the sidewalk could hear him. When fans knew he was in town, they would come sit outside and listen to him play and sing. It was really a special time. And Dad uh, recorded that, and there is a recording of Elvis playing our piano and singing. I don't know if you've, have you ever heard it, Trey? I don't think, I, maybe, okay. but I will be listening to it here in okay. a little bit. very cool. And then the home movies that are on the internet were taken mostly in this room. So you can see Elvis sitting on the couch, Anita next to him. There's uh, some food out in front of him. And my dad has out the uh, movie camera and Elvis is reaching over to take a sweet pickle, is what he had, uh, that he really liked. So he had a little baby sweet pickle, and he was eating that. And my dad suddenly, like, pushes me and goes, goes go get in the, in the picture with Elvis. And so I was shy. I was, you know, I was four and a half years old. But I walked over dutifully and, and stood next to Elvis, and he um, kissed me on the cheek. And I kind of do this, you know, because he had pickle juice on his lips. And even though I thought he was very handsome, I didn't like sticky pickle juice. And he had just taken a bite of pickle when he did that. So I was like, you know, wanting to wipe it off. <laughs> I don't know that I actually did, got it off. But I, I probably, after I was out of the view of the camera, I probably did this. Right. So anyway, that was kind of a funny story. But... Um, Elvis and Anita sat here. Their friends from the base were over here. Uh, then later in the day, I think it was that same day because Anita was here and she actually sang on the uh, 
audio that we have. So daddy has audio, re audio recording and then our home movies. Birthday, baby. No, I can't. kiss right here that's right and is that kiss on film we see that kiss mm -hmm. in the footage i'm gonna have to go and try i to believe so yeah hopefully i can pull the footage and put it over as you were talking that would be great so the fans will now understand if you're watching this and i've been able to do that well <laughs> that stuff guys was captured here so come and hang out in this room when you rent the waco house that's right that's right and they have a nice tv <laughs> I don't think Elvis saw the TV like that. No, no, there was no El uh, TV like that when Elvis was around. <laughs> but you know he would have had a bunch of them. Hey, he would shot a lot of those big screens out. <laughs> Speaking of TVs and Elvis, I do have a three-screen TV that was made by Sony for very special people. President John F. Kennedy actually had one. And I have Elvis's, and it's in this house. So let's go see that. Let's go do it. All right. All right, I'll follow you. Okay. You might have heard that my father added a room onto our house so that Elvis would have a den to play music. Well, this is that room. So let's go check it out. This room was originally a porta cachet or a carport that my dad changed into a little listening stereo room. So he had a stereo in the spot that the stereo is in right now. The one that was here when Elvis was here was black lacquer and it had white speakers on either end. It was really it was really a cool piece. I wish we still had it. But that was the stereo. In this corner over here where the TV is, there was a little uh, 45 player, so he could play 45s. The, Elvis's favorite colors at the time were pink and black. So Daddy painted this room. He made it just for Elvis, so the cabinets, the bookshelves were pink and black. The stereo was black. Uh, so it had, um, it also had carpet in here. It was kind of a black and white, kind of a pepper, salt and pepper look rug so when I, when we came to furnishing the house i tried to do it as much as i could as the way that elvis uh was it, the way it was when elvis was here so i got a salt and pepper rug and <laughs> an old-timey stereo to put in here so but i was going to tell you about the tv so let's go over here and check out this tv this tv was made by sony and back when I was a kid, and until for many, many years later, there were only three channels mm -hmm. that you could watch on television. 
It was ABC, CBS, and NBC. And as many of you know, Elvis liked to watch all three at one time if he could. He didn't want to miss anything. So before he got this, he had three TVs in his home so he could watch all three networks. This even came with a remote control, if you can believe it. So it's a very unique piece. Um, this actually is a replica of the original. I said it was the one that was in Elvis's home, but we actually sold that one and happened to find this at an estate sale in Austin. It belonged to a congressman from Texas. And my brother came across it in an estate sale. So we were able to replace the one that I had from Lamar Fike, who I was briefly married to, with this one. It is identical so to Elvis's. That was how Elvis Presley's was. Mm -hmm. That is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't want to miss anything, so he had all the TVs. Every game that was on, he had it. <laughs> That's right. He did. That's he didn't great. want to miss anything. <laughs> so today, he would just be amazed. Oh, he would, wouldn't he, though? He would have to have, what? 500 televisions. Oh, I don't know how he could keep up. He would love it, though, I would guess. Oh, he would. Yeah. Yeah, he would have something top-notch. Oh, yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. So this room has a lot of history in it because it, in our home movies that I'm referring to again, Elvis and Anita are sitting in a chair about in this spot. You can see the cabinets behind them, and they're kissing a hmm. lot, playfully kissing. And Dad captured all that on film, so you can see that in the movies. So that's right here in this area. Right, right here. So. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this is a really cool room, Janice. Yeah, thank you. And my favorite thing is over there, Marilyn Monroe, but I can't zoom in on it. <laughs> the guys will just have to understand, but that's my favorite probably thing yeah. in the house, that Marilyn Monroe calendar. That was, <laughs> that was what made her famous, Trey. I would zoom in, guys, maybe really quick. Well, yeah. let me zoom back up. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of glare on it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll just have to, men, you just have to come and sit here yeah. to see what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And the ladies, though, they have all Elvis. That's so, right. Yeah, this is a great place. Oh, I see some pictures over here. Yeah, let's check these out. So, these pictures have a lot of stories behind them. Let's start here and I'll end with this okay. one. This is Elvis in Waco at the heart of Texas Coliseum. It's probably before his show mm -hmm. that we showed you a picture from earlier. And you can see right here, there's a tape recorder and it says KWTX. That's our local radio station. And this young man here is interviewing Elvis. Isn't that cool? It is really cool. And behind him is Nick it's Adams. Nick Adams. The man we were just talking about in No Time for Sergeants. Mm -hmm. So that's a really cool picture, I think, to capture that moment. And maybe I can get into this place and go and look for that and know that was I in that room. I don't even know where that would be. It's wherever know. the back is. <laughs> somewhere, it has to be there somewhere. Well, Trey, unfortunately, they just did a huge remodel on it, but it might be, might maybe, be there still. Maybe. Okay, then we have another picture taken in Waco with Nick, my dad, Elvis, and this beautiful lady that we don't know who she is. Yeah, who is she? I don't know. Elvis never, had his arms around I know it. It was a pretty girl hey, that Elvis wanted to meet. Another girlfriend? Yeah, yes. another girlfriend. <laughs> yep, unfortunately. He had, or fortunately, he had a lot of girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> he did do that. I, I'll vouch for him on that yeah. one. Yeah, he was a real ladies' man, of course. Okay, and then this picture has a lot of history that goes with it. Um, this was Elvis's very last night before he shipped off to Germany in the Army. So he had been up with all of his friends, and I have another picture I'll show you, and was very sad. Everyone had been crying. Elvis did not want to leave. He was so sad, he thought everyone would forget about him if he went to Germany for two years. And this is my dad. You can tell they're both teary-eyed. And my dad reassured him. He said, nobody's gonna forget about you, Elvis. How could they, you know? And Elvis continued, I believe this is right, continued to put out records 
while he was in Germany. I think maybe they recorded him before he left or something. Yeah. But the colonel had planned for, for this. So um, that was a good thing. But Elvis was very worried about it. And you'll see that my dad is wearing this alpaca sweater. And that was Elvis's sweater. And when he took it off that night to put on his uniform, he laid it down. And my dad must have commented that it was a really nice sweater, and it was. It was beautiful. It's black with this white trim. And Elvis said, well, Eddie, just take it. I don't need it. You know, I'm leaving. All I can wear is this uniform for the next two years, basically. So you can see my dad wearing it in this picture. Elvis had just taken it off to change into his uniform. And we just sold that at the Graceland auction of recently. You did. It was yeah. recent. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. So that piece had a lot of history and a lot of meaning. That's great. Yeah. And if you do come here as well, you can read a lot of Elvis books. I see Linda Thompson's book over there. The Elvis Encyclopedia is right here. Oh my God, Nipper, that. the RCA dog. This cool little promotional piece of EP. Mm -hmm. All kind of things, guys. Elvis, a 30-year chronicle. Books all over the place. Books all over the place. So you have to spend a few days here at this house. <laughs> Absolutely. We'd love that. Let me show you Nick Adams oh, um, okay. over here. This was a collage that my dad put together of Nick. And uh, because he visited our home with Elvis and Nick uh, gave us a signed picture of himself standing in front of the marquee for No Time for no Sergeants. No Time for Sergeants. Yeah. Andy Griffith. I love it. And there's another really cool picture of him in front of that, a little close up. <laughs> and then the photographs of him in our home. And then here's an article from that show on October 12, 1956. Pres Presley thrills crowd of 26,500. Yeah. And it looks like here's a few more pictures. Wow, look at this girl. She's going crazy. <laughs> Is that original? The original autograph? I believe so. I think so, yeah. Yeah. To Eddie. A one and a million tr true friend to everyone. I can't find words to tell you what a truly humble, sincere, honest, unselfish, loyal person you are. Don't ever... Don't ever hesitate to call me Aww. if you ever need anything. That's from Nick Adams. Yep. That's a pretty cool autograph right there. Yeah, yes. it really is. And Nick's daughter found a diary that Nick had written of the time that he spent with Elvis. So I can't remember the name of it right now, but you should look it up if you want. If you're a big Elvis fan or you're just a fan of history and want to read about that time period in Nick Adams and Elvis Presley's life, should look it up. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll definitely do that because I, I, that's an interesting part with Nick Adams hanging out in the Tupelo Fairgrounds. Yes. There when Elvis went back home for the home I think coming. it was on that same trip. He went yeah. on tour with Elvis. Okay. So that's kept, when he met, met your dad. Yeah. And he did a, he kept a diary during that time. And his daughter Allison found it and published it. So it's really cool. It's, really it's cool. very sweet. So in, uh, you have a little bar area over here. Mm -hmm. That was so, not here when Elvis was here. Yeah, how you were explaining to me is that was kind of more open back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it had like a, a, a door like the other. There were two French, there were French doors here. French doors here. There was a porte cochet, like I said, that attached to the house. And you could park there and bring your groceries in to the kitchen. It was very convenient. A lot of older homes had those. So when Dad, after Dad met Elvis and he wanted to do this room, he closed that in. So that's how that room came to be. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So yeah, another cool place to hang out when you uh, stay here at the Waco house. Another cool Elvis place. Hey, that's what we call it, right? <laughs> that's right. The Elvis. C, C, yeah. C, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Set, C, place, we say spot. So cool Elvis spot. Yeah. Six. So you want to go see the bedrooms? Oh, of course. Let's All see. right, let's do it. 
Okay, so this is a picture of my dad when he worked at the radio station where he met Elvis. It's KRLD in Dallas. Dad was a disc jockey there, and Elvis was coming through promoting his records when they met one day. And they just instantly hit it off. Elvis um, said he, you know, would be on tour, and my dad said, well, when you're a Mako, if you're in, if you're a Mako, come, you know, I'd love to have you to my house, to my, meet my family, and, you know, we can hang out. So that's how that friendship was born. And then later, in 56, when he played here, and Daddy went to the stage door, that was a story that I just told you a few minutes ago. So that's how that relates. But this is Daddy working at KRLD, T, uh, KRLD Radio. How long did he work in the radio? Gosh. Forever? No, but Dad was always, probably about two or three years, I would guess. It wasn't very long because it was in Dallas and he had to commute. Mm -hmm. But uh, he did also but teach. What would that drive be like back in 1950? Well, it was over 100 miles in 1950. So he would do that every day? Uh, yeah, when he would work, yeah. Man. He had a place up there he would stay. I've actually found some stationery from it. It was, back then you could rent a hotel room really inexpensively or a room in a boarding house type situation really inexpensively. So he would do that and stay, work a string of days, and then come home. Yeah, come home. Yeah, so that's how that worked. But he was very young back then. All right, and my dad was always a media lover. I mean, obviously he worked in radio in his uh, last days. He was a sports writer for a local newspaper. So when anybody famous, especially a musician, would come to town, he would be there to cover it in some way, <laughs> whether he wrote an article or he just wanted to meet these people. So here he is with Little Richard, of all people, yeah, came to Waco. And what a picture in history that is. But that was at the heart of, heart of Texas Coliseum, where Elvis also appeared. And there was like a big, back then they would have things they would call jamborees, I think. Mm -hmm. And they would have, it would be a headliner, you know, all day long kind of thing with all these different artists on it. So this was one of those jamborees. Little Richard was there, Bill Haley of Bill Haley and Comet and the Comets fame was there. I love that picture with his little curl there. Yeah, his curls there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they were on the same bill. I believe Laverne Baker was on that same show. Laverne. And there's Dad with her. Yeah. So this little Richard must have been on a different show because their dad's de uh, dressed, dressed differently. differently. Yep. So these two were definitely on the same show. Wow. And, and he had the autographed pictures of uh, Bill Haley in the comments. Yeah. That's a, that's a replica. That's a copy. Oh, okay, it is? Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we have more. Lots of fun. Then this is Jean Vincent, who did Bebopalua. <laughs> that was his band. I believe that's Jean Vincent right there. In later years, Dad met Sandra D. We had a cousin who worked in uh, for Screen Gems Television in L.A. And the times that we went out to visit them, uh, those relatives, we would be on movie sets and TV sets. So I was on the set of uh, Hazel, which was a really cute show back in the day. And Dad, when he went out there alone, got to be on the set of I Dream of Jeannie and met Barbara Eden and was just in love with her. She was just an amazing lady. So Dad loved this kind of thing. He met uh, Ellie Mae. Okay. Ellie Mae Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. She has an Elvis <laughs> connection. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. Well, you'll have to talk about that, too. And that's, um... Who is that? Is that Danny Osmond? Oh, it might be. Yep, that's Danny Osmond. I didn't re I thought it was an Elvis impersonator. Okay, well, is that Schutz? <laughs> I don't know. That, is that Stephen? I don't know. From Rockology. It, it was just, it was framed with this, so I just left it. I'll have to ask Schutz. That yeah. could be Schutz. And yeah. I, Stephen, if that's you... I just called you Donny Osmond because you do look like him. That might be that our would friend. Be cool. That might be our friend Shuts. I, I, I was thinking, is that Shuts? And then I was like, or is that Donny Osmond? Well, I've watched his videos too, and I've met him. He's great. He does a lot of really cool things yeah. with well, Elvis history. I think that might be Stephen. It might. That would be really cool. If that it would was. be cool. <laughs> I'd love to know. You yeah. have to let me know. 
My grandmother passed away in 1959, shortly after Gladys had passed away in 1958. So the Presley family sent us a very nice telegram um, saying that they understood that kind of a loss because Elvis had just lost his mother and that they, you know, sent their sympathies to us. And that was very sweet. So we still have the copy of that original telegram. Wow. Yeah. And so this is, like you that. said, this is original. Yeah. It's what they like. That's how people communicated back in those days. Yeah. We are happy to say that we had the privilege of meeting and getting to know your mother. And she was great. May God bless the Fidel, Fidel mm -hmm. family. Fidel, Fidel family. Mm -hmm. Until we see you again, sincerely, the Presley family. Right. And that was on Janice, March the 3rd, 1959. Yeah, it says, Dear Eddie and family, so sorry to hear about the loss of your dear mother. And you have our deepest heartfelt sympathy. You know, if it were possible, we would be there with you in person since that is not possible. We want you. End of sheet one. So, you know, you had to send multiple yeah. sheets to know that we share your grief as you well know. Not so long ago, we suffered the loss of a dear loved one in which we are still suffering and miss her more and more each day. But only God can comfort us at a time like this. And then like we just read, and he ends it with the Presley family. That's pretty cool to have right yeah. there, Janice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's very, it was very thoughtful of them. Western too, Union. Yeah. Western Union. Hey, now all we do is take our phone out and I text you, hey Janice, I'm five minutes away. <laughs> hey, heard your grandmother died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> two so thumbs different. up or two thumbs down, whatever. <laughs> so different, right? <laughs> so different. All right, so I told you I'd tell you about this picture when we were in the pink and black den because this again was taken the night before Elvis ship, uh, shipped out to Germany. So there's my dad. He's just kind of poking his head over the cousins. Uh, which one is that? Yeah, that is, who is that? That's, I know there's Jean on the far left. Yeah, right, I recognize no. Jean and Vernon. Lamar. Lamar, yeah, Red. There's Red. Oh, is that Red? Yeah, that's Red West. Okay, this was a, she was a, a fan club president and so, were some of these ladies over here. So they were the only people that were there that night. This must be another cousin. That's Jean. That's Jean. Yeah, the other one is... Um, What's that one? Uh, man, and I always forget his name. <laughs> He's the other cousin. He died early. Oh. Um, it'll come back to me in a minute. Okay. But he, he and Jean are in all those early pictures. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I Elvis. recognize their faces for yeah. sure. And yeah, Elvis, well, he looked upset. <laughs> They were. They had, like I said before, they had all been up, you know, for hours and hours, just crying and trying to console Elvis. And, you know, um, then he finally had to put his uniform on and head out the door to a place far away that he never dreamed he'd end up in, <laughs> in Germany. In Germany, of all places, yeah, they sent Elvis places. to the army. Mm hmm Yeah. I think he ended up making the most of his time there, though, when he was there. He did. Yeah. As, I, as he always did. More okay. popular than ever. So, yep. Yeah. So here's some more people. Um, Clyde, Clyde McFadden. Or the Drifters, yeah. Now, somebody wrote me and told me that one of these, this was wrong. But I'm not, I, I'm not sure about that. I might have changed it. Maybe that is Fats right. Domino, though. Fats Domino, right. Wow. So these guys must have been on the same jamboree as the other as people. A, as, yeah, yeah, because Dad's got, got the dance. same, yeah. Same outfit, yeah. And so here we've just got more, another picture taken at the Coliseum with uh, Frankie Lyman, who was a popular singer at, those, at that time. And uh, the Platters, oh, the Platters, autographed picture. That is great. Yeah. Really, really cool. And then my mom and dad, they were on the set of Make Room for Daddy, which was a Danny Thomas show back in the days. Yeah. And my dad was full-blooded Lebanese, and so was Danny Thomas. And my cousin worked on that show. Yeah, they kind of favor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my cousin who worked on the show had, his father's name was Tanyas. And Danny Thomas took the name Tanyas and turned it to Tanus. 
and named one of the characters on the show Uncle Tanoose based on my cousin's father. So it's That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And you might not know this, right? but the Andy Griffith, Griffith show started off of the Danny Thomas show. No, I did not know Yeah, that. the pilot episode, Andy appeared on the Danny Thomas episode oh, wow. as a sheriff All and these... a justice of the peace. And that spun into the Andy Griffith show. So many connections between Yeah, Andy people. pulls him over in Mayberry. Danny <laughs> Thomas for Pulls speed. Danny Thomas over. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me, one time we were driving somewhere. I was with my folks. I was just a little kid. And it was when Roy Rogers and Dale Evans were so popular. And Dale Evans lived around here somewhere. I, don't, I think we're going to Dallas or Houston. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, Daddy said, let's, let's uh, go find her you know daddy was kind of like you trey he uh would track down people and places and history and stuff so we actually went to dale evans home she was outside pruning some rose bushes and we got to say hi to her so that was kind of cool the only way that you make it happen is if you do it yeah absolutely and dad was like that he was brave he never met a stranger just right. like you trey right so he could go into any situation and you know just go right through it. Just breeze through it. <laughs> hey, your dad, your dad, TCB, he took care of business. Oh yeah, he did. He definitely did. Okay, so now we'll start with the bedrooms. We're going to start down at the other end because I want to end with a very special room. So let's start down there. This is staged as my brother's bedroom, Dana. And when he was a little boy, um, I just kind of decorated with things that were time period uh, appropriate. And we do have an Elvis poster, the Love Me Tender Elvis poster. It was the closest thing I could get to a cowboy looking uh, poster, but it's a really fun room. And the fun Elvis story in this room is that back in the day when Elvis was visiting, there was a character on TV and on billboards known as Reddy Kilowatt. And Reddy Kilowatt was the mascot for the energy electric companies in the South. And he just appeared as a, a funny little character to get your attention, to tell you all about electricity. And he was made up of lightning bolts, and he had a light bulb for a nose. So Elvis eventually ended up calling my brother by the nickname Reddy Kilowatt because my brother, Dana, love to play with light bulbs. And one day when Elvis was visiting, Dana grabbed a light bulb from the cabinet and was walking around the house holding it and Elvis cracked up. He just thought that was the funniest thing that he had ever seen. As a kid, not playing with toys, but playing with a light bulb. So Dana forever became Reddy Kilowatt. And this is a picture of what Reddy Kilowatt looked like. Wow. So you can get an idea. So he's got the light bulb for the nose. Yeah. <laughs> wow so, so that's something elvis would have known back then yes would've, elvis would have known about that. that okay everybody knew about ready kilowatt so now i'm gonna call your brother ready kilowatt yes you Anytime can i see him i didn't know that <laughs> you should the, the, he'll i will know. next time i will <laughs> he will know why you're calling him that too that's great okay so the next bedroom what's my bedroom oh okay and it's just decorated in a 60s, 70s kind of vibe because that was my era. And honestly, I thought Elvis was really old fashioned and that the Beatles were the, you know, the best. And so I've decorated with some Beatles drawings and Joni Mitchell, which uh, Trey just showed you a portrait of her from one of her early albums, and then the musical Hair. So this is just kind of a retro room that goes back to the 60s and 70s. But this was your... This was my bedroom. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this. Did you ever sneak out of the window? No. Oh gosh, my dad would have killed me. <laughs> and he would have found out. He would have found out. He would have found out. No, I was scared to death. <laughs> you were thinking about it then. Your dad <laughs> yeah. thinking about it. Well, you know, all my friends did that, but I sure wasn't going to try right, it. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I had to ask you. So okay. Cool. Yeah, nice room. Yeah, it is a nice room. I have many great memories of being a child in that room. Okay, so we're back to the hallway. This was the original bathroom in the house. You can see the original tile is still here on yeah, the floor. That's great. The original sink. 
Oh, that is the original sink. Yes, uh huh. That's the original sink. Some of the this is an original fi uh, fixture for the toothbrushes. This is an original fixture for the toilet paper. Oh wow! Okay. This house was built in the 1920s, 1924. 1924. The bathtub still has the original subway tile and the original bathtub. So it's all original in here. This is all original. This little closet was original. A little um, uh, towel linen closet. We have a little space heater down there, a gas space heater. It doesn't work anymore, but that was original. And it was here when Elvis was here. Mm -hmm. That's the point. That's how you had to heat up the bathroom oh, early yeah. in the mornings when it was cold in here. You had that bathroom heat. And it right. worked great, too. You could really warm this room yeah, up fast. Yeah, it would feel good. Yeah. But so, I bet it, you, you had to do that during the winter. Oh, it would get cold oh absolutely. All this tile in here was very cold. Yeah. So this is the bathroom that Elvis would most likely use because it was close to the living room and, and also to the bedroom that I'm going to show you where Elvis used to stay with his girlfriend and Nina. Let's go see. Let's go check that out. Okay, so this is the bedroom where Elvis would sleep or lay down for a little nap. And at the time that he visited our home, Anita was his girlfriend. She was very beautiful, very glamorous, and very sweet. So I have a really special place in my heart for Anita. I used to really adore her when I was a little girl. <laughs> so we've decorated this room as a tribute to Elvis and Anita, in a way, and kind of a little bit of glam that um, Elvis had. Got this old photograph that I found of Elvis. It looks like it was taken out of a magazine. <clears throat> and a fan must have framed that many, many years ago because this is a really old frame. That's great. Yeah. And then here's Anita. She was so beautiful. She was a singer and she was a celebrity in Memphis on the radio. Yeah. So and yeah, was... her eyes popped. Oh, yeah. She was pretty. Very pretty. To me, I thought, you know, she was Marilyn Monroe. To me. She does have that look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, she's been, uh, uh, there is pictures where they've identified uh, Marilyn Monroe with Elvis, and it's like this picture right here. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> They're here in your kitchen, in your house. <laughs> in our house, in the dining room. Yeah, your dining room. Yeah, so this dress of hers was like a hot pink or a red. It was very, very pretty. And we had a cake made to celebrate Elvis's birthday. It was late. Uh, it wasn't in January, but when he visited for the first time after his birthday daddy had this cake made and it has a picture of elvis and a hound dog on it and it has musical notes on it very cute and elvis is in his army uniform so this these were taken on the same day as our home movies and also something i forgot to say was that elvis has a little bandage on his little finger um, and he had gotten off base that day because he hurt his little finger out um, in maneuvers so he had gone to the medic to get his finger taped up and he had just come over here out of the blue in the middle of the week when he was supposed to be on base because he hurt his finger so that's why he has the little bandage on his finger that's a pretty funny story so he figured out a way to leave he did <laughs> that's great yeah and that was taken in the dining room too so guys when you rent this waco house you have to Put your bags, be the first one in the house, so you can put your bags in this room. That's right. Because this room, as Janice just told us, was where Elvis stayed. Cool. That's right. And you told me, was the bed more, was the bed over here? The bed the was day? actually on this wall, and it was a, a standard size bed, just a double bed. Oh, okay. That's what we used to call them. We didn't have king size beds back then. So there was a bed here, there was a dresser on this wall. Dresser ran on mm -hmm. this wall. Mm -hmm. And what you're about to see in the next room, there would have been a window right here, I think you told me. There, would have, there were about three windows on three this Three windows wall. on this wall mm -hmm. back when Elvis was here, and that door was not here. Correct. Correct. That was a window before. Yeah. And it overlooked our front porch and beyond it, the front yard. So I'll show you this room. My parents closed it in 
but it's a useful room to have at, at for a B and B because uh, it just gives you a little more space. Oh yeah. I can't get the lights to come on. So my parents enclosed this, but there were arches. You can see from the outside and from in here that there's arches on the front of the house, and they also ran down the entire side of the house. So this was all open, and you could see out into the yard. Right. And like we just said, that wall had three windows mm -hmm. there. So Elvis would have looked out probably the window yeah. from his bedroom. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me that there was kind of like a entrance over here, right? Or like Yeah, a, this door, they actually closed in a portion of the porch that was like a walkway. Yeah. And you can see the original brick and the arch. So you can see the arch, guys, as Janice was just telling us mm -hmm. right there. And there's a window for the bedroom that's behind the bed. Oh, you see, and the window's been closed in. Yeah. That's behind the bed. Yeah. Just a little bit more of what it was like back at that time in 1957, 58, mm -hmm. 59, 60. That's right. We have a cool place here. Thank you, Trey. Wow. The history. Yeah, I'm so glad we kept the house, that my brother didn't sell it, that we can now offer it as an Airbnb to people who want to come see where Elvis stayed and even learn about Elvis. That's really been the cool thing about this, is I've had people write me and say that they brought their teenage daughters who had never heard of Elvis, and now they're fans mm -hmm. after staying here. So it's really cool. Yeah, and then, you know, because you know what our videos are about. It's that, about the history. That's right. And what I like about your place is I can read the stories on the wall with the pictures. Yeah, that's like right. It, like there in the dining room mm -hmm. uh, with um, when you're a little girl there, and there's a little story. So everyone that comes into this house, you're going to have not only a cool place to stay, no one Elvis is here, but you will have an Elvis history lesson. That's right. <laughs> Definitely. And you will leave this place knowing a little bit more about Elvis here in Waco and probably become an even bigger Elvis fan. So if you like your teenage daughters, your grandkids <laughs> to learn a little bit about Elvis and make them a fan, bring them to Janice's childhood home here in Waco, Texas. And I guarantee you, they're going to leave wanting to know more about Elvis Presley. Yes, they will. And maybe they'll stumble on Glow Trotting with Trey or the Spy Guy. And they'll see, they'll see this tour. Right. Well, is this, is there any more places? Um, I could show the closet at the end of the hall that used to be open. That's what, show yeah, that. yes, because that was a part yeah, of Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, as things changed over the years, my dad closed up several things, the porta cachet the front porch. <laughs> he also made a closet here at the end of our hallway. Okay. There's a long hallway, Trey, if you want to show what it looks like from this direction. It's a long hallway. And my mom was always needing more closet space. Ladies, you understand that. <laughs> so, Dad decided he was going to take part of the hallway and make a closet out of it. But right here at the very back of this closet was where this door was. And on the other side of that is where our piano was. So when Elvis would visit and play the piano, this closet was not here. So you could stand at the back of the house, look down the hallway, and see and hear Elvis play the piano in the living room, which is also right in front of the front door. Right. So <laughs> you could see out our front door into the yard from where Trey's standing at the end of the hall. So guys, can y'all can y'all picture that, what we're talking about? Remember when we were there in the living room, which now I'm showing you right now on screen, that piano was right there where the table is now. Front door, of course, you see that. But that door would be open, so can you picture right now Elvis sitting at a piano, playing away, and you're standing right here just looking down the hall, long hallway all the way to the front door. That's there right. Elvis is on the piano, and he's playing, what is he playing? Uh, Happy Birthday Baby was his favorite song that he played on our recording. So, so he played Happy Birthday Baby in this house. With Anita singing along. 
And guys, I'm gonna try to play a little bit of that right now. Yeah, find it. That's <laughs> cool. that's cool, Janice. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's everything in the house. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the tour. I've made it as uh, informative as I possibly could. So come see us. And we also have a book called Elvis Days that you might be interested in. It tells a lot of the stories that I've told today and others. How do they purchase the book? You can purchase that through our website, theelvishouse.com. And on that website, can you rent the house or do we go to Airbnb? You have to go to Airbnb and search in Waco, Texas for the Elvis house. And guys, all of those links are in this, this description of Glow Trotting with Trey's episode. So all you have to do is go and click on it. And it's pretty much self-explanatory after that. Just follow the directions, book your, uh, your stay, <laughs> and come here and just have a good Elvis time. That's right. All right. Well, thank you, Janice, for giving me the ultimate tour. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Don't double dribble, as I always say. <laughs> Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey. Follow me in here, Janice. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new Elvis episode that I upload each Tuesday and special ones here and there. Guys, one more time. Elvis was there. Once upon a time in his life, this photo. And you can be too. Book the Waco House today on Airbnb and let them know that Glow Trotting with Trey sent you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.